Hi, everyone. My name is Hao Ran. Today, I'm going to present our recent work, Fault Tolerant and Transactional Stateful Serverless Workflows. This is a co work with Adney, Peter, and my advisors, Sebastian and Vincent. First, what is serverless? Serverless, or function as a service, is a new computing model that offloads the responsibility for maintaining servers to cloud providers. Nowadays, many cloud providers have their own service platforms, including Amazon's AWS Lambda, Google's Cloud Function, and Microsoft's Azure Function. In service, the developers send the code snippet or binary to the cloud, depending on what programming language they are using. To launch the service, users send requests to the API gateway, which will forward the request to one of the av available workers. The worker that receives the request will then launch the code or binary provided by the developers. Serverless is a suitable approach to write stateless functions, and people use it to write stateful applications as well by connecting it to a remote storage system. Each application can have its own standalone database, or it can share database with other applications. And all three cloud providers we mentioned provide provide database for their use, including Amazon's DynamoDB, Google's Bigtable, and Microsoft's Cosmos DB. Note that there is no coordination between different workers. So if one service wants to launch or call another service, it cannot simply send a request to another worker. Instead, it will send it to the API gateway. And the gateway will help find an available worker to accept its request. Well, service has many benefits. For example, developers don't need to worry about managing servers. It suffers from a major issue. Workers can fail. And the way it handles failures plays a high burden on developers. Check this example. Suppose the conference organizers want to count up the number of attendees who want to have lunch at the venue, and they want to make it using service. The program is very simple. When it receives a new request, it reads the current value of attendees from the database, increase it by one, and write it back. Even in this simple example, problems may occur. If the user receives an error from the cloud, or the request times out, they don't know whether they should retry, because they don't know when the program crashed. If it crashed after the write, and the client or the cloud provider retries, then the number of attendees will be counted incorrectly they may end up serving more people than expected and costing more money. So what should we do? Let's ask the cloud providers. Google, Amazon, Microsoft all ask developers to write idempotent functions. Idempotent functions are the functions that can be applied multiple times without changing the result beyond the initial application. Idempotence lets developers or cloud providers safely retry an invocation if the previous invocation fails halfway through the code. Stateless functions are always idempotent. However, many applications, including our example, are stateful. While it is possible to make our launch counter application idempotent by modifying how it works, it requires significant change to its logic. Our system, Beldy, makes serverless application idempotent automatically and guarantees exactly one's semantics in the presence of failure. In this talk, we will first introduce Beldy's infrastructure and two techniques. One is a new data structure that allows Beldy to work transparently on databases such as DynamoDB. The second is a new mechanism to support exactly one semantics for function invocations followed by the evaluation and conclusion. Let me show you Beldy's architecture with our previous example. Beldy acts as a shame layer between the workers and the storage system. Beldy libraries expose three APIs to the client. API to read and write from the database, API for one service function to invoke another, API to define transactions across multiple service functions. Each Lambda keeps three tables, a progress table where it keeps track of the progress of its entire execution, a user table where it stores the data, and a log table where it logs all the operations and return value. 
Our example doesn't have transactions or invocations, so we will ignore them for now. Once the Lambda starts, the cloud provider will assign it a unique ID. We call it instance ID. Then the Lambda will register itself in its progress table by using this ID as the primary key and mark itself as unfinished. Correspondingly, when the Lambda finish, it will mark itself as done in the progress table. We also have a progress Lambda triggered periodically by the cloud provider to restart unfinished Lambdas. BLD guarantee, guarantees exactly one semantics for database operations by logging what it has done. The technique is inspired by OLIF, the OSDI 16 paper. For example, the read operation here will first read the value from, from the database and store it into a separate log table using the operation ID as its primary key. The operation ID for this read is its instance ID dash one, meaning it's the first operation in this lambda. Suppose the lambda crash after read. When later it gets restarted by the progress lambda, it will try to redo all its operations. So it will read the value from the database again, and potentially it will get a different value. But when it tries to log its result into the log table, the database will tell it there is a key conflict. Then it will figure out that it has already done this read before, and it can read the result directly from the log instead of reading it from the original table. Note that it doesn't violate safety if the lambda crash between read and logging because read has no externally visible side effects, which means as long as the following write is not performed, it's always okay to reread the value upon recovery. However, unlike read, write has to be logged atomically. Let's see what, could, what would go wrong if they don't. First, it updates the value to 11 then it appends a new log entry in the log table with instance, instance ID dash two, which again means it's the second operation in this lambda. If the lambda crash after the write, upon recovery, the write will check the log and find it has already done this write before, so it can skip it and move on. However, if the lambda crash between writing and logging, so between one and two, then upon recovery, it will do the writing the second time, which violates exactly one semantics. So one and two has to be done atomically. One way to do so is to put them in a cross table transaction, but transactions are normally expensive and not all database support transactions. We ad adapt a mechanism from Olive called DAO, which basically co-locates log entries with the item's data in the same row. BLD has a new column called recent writes in the user table. Once the write comes, it will update the data and insert a log entry via a single request to the database. Finally, the logs are growing over time, so we need a garbage collector also triggered periodically by the cloud provider to free the storage. There are some technical challenges. First, some databases don't have enough space per row. Since we are co-locating the log entries with data, we have to aggressively garbage collect these logs. Second, each lambda is federated. It has its own progress lambda and garbage collector. Later, I'm gonna show you why this is an issue, particularly when we have function invocations. And third, we might want automaticity across different lambdas. So we propose a transaction protocol as well. In this talk, we will cover the first two. If you are interested how we handle transactions, you can check our paper for details. Let's begin with the first challenge. Suppose we are using DynamoDB. Each row in DynamoDB can hold up to 400 kilobytes. That's not a lot, so this row can be full very quickly. Suppose the row can only hold up to 1,000 logs then the 1,000 and the first write won't succeed until the row gate garbage collect. To solve this, we design a data structure called LinkDAO that spreads the, lo spread the logs for a given key across multiple rows with new rows added as needed. Once the row is filled, the next write will create a new row and append it to the original row. The structure of LinkDAO looks like this. 
the row ID and user key together compose the primary key in the database. Note that only the tail of the list contains the newest data. Data in previous rows are outdated. As a result, read and write operations require traversal to the tail of the link down. So how do we traverse to the tail? The simplest way to do so is to start from the head row, find the next row pointer, then read the next row, and so on, until it finds the tail. While this procedure will eventually reach the tail, the number of round trips between the worker and database grows with the length of the link down. Our idea is to use scan and projection to download a skeleton version of our link down. BLD can then traverse it quickly. Specifically, BLD issues a single scan operation to the database that returns every row containing a target key. On its own, the scan operation returns all contents of each row. To reduce this overhead, BLD applies a projection that filters out all columns except for row ID and next row. This combination of scan and projection allows BLD to download only 256 bits per row. From these rows, BLD builds a local version of link down, then it can quickly traverse to the tail and apply the operation directly to the tail. We discuss how link down handles concurrent operations and cooperate with garbage collection in our paper. Next, we want to talk about invocations with exactly one semantics. One problem with the federated setup of service is that it's hard to guarantee exactly one semantics when one lambda invokes another. This is especially difficult when each lambda has its own independent garbage collector. Let me give you an example. When lambda one synchronously invoke lambda two, it will first generate the instance ID for lambda two and store it in the log table. Lambda 2 saves the ID it received from Lambda 1 to the progress table. Then it does some writes. Before it returns the response, it marks itself as done in the progress table. If Lambda 2 crash before sending response back, Lambda 1 will times out. Upon recovery, Lambda 1 retains the instance ID of Lambda 2 from the log table and invoke Lambda 2 again with the same ID. Because of the exactly one semantics of database operations, all writes in Lambda 2 would be skipped and return the result to Lambda 1. This seems to be working very well. However, there is an issue here. The reason is garbage collection and the federated setup of service. Remember that each Lambda has its own progress Lambda and garbage collector running independently. So it's possible that before Lambda 1 gets restarted, the garbage collector of Lambda 2 is triggered and clean up all its logs. Later, when Lambda 1 invoke Lambda 2 again, all writes in Lambda 2 will be performed twice, which violates exactly one semantics. To solve this, we propose a callback mechanism for invocations. We add a new field called result in the caller's log table. Before Lambda 2 marks itself as done in the pre progress table, it sends a callback to Lambda 1, asking it to save the result to its log table. Even if Lambda 2 crash before return and get garbage correct, Lambda 1 can directly fetch the return value from the log instead of calling Lambda 2 again. The actual mechanism is a, a little more complicated because Lambdas cannot talk to each other directly. They have to go through API gateway. Essentially, the callback mo moves the result from callee side to the caller side, so both of them can be garbage collect independently. Asynchronous invocation is similar. Check our paper for details. Next, we want to talk about the performance of BLD by answering three questions. First, what are the costs of BLD's API operations? Second, how does BLD perform in real-world applications? Third, what's the effect of garbage collection? We will cover the first two in this talk. All our experiments run on AWS Lambda with the memory to be one gigabyte per Lambda. Baldi's API operations include read, write, conditional write, and invocations. As we mentioned, we can use cross-table transaction instead of DAO for writes. 
Here we compare BLD with link dial, BLD with cross table transactions with the baseline. We run the macro benchmark with keys to be one byte and the values to be 16 bytes. Since BLD's database operation depends on the length of the linked DAO, we make a conservative setting by populating the chosen key's linked DAO with, two, uh, with 20 rows. The figure shows the overhead of BLD's read and write comes from two sources, scanning the linked DAO and logging. For invocation, the overhead comes from our callback mechanism and logging. Consequently, all of BLD's operation are around two to four times more expensive than the baseline. To evaluate on real-world applications, we adapt the workloads from Star Bench, an open-source microservice benchmark. We port three of its applications to the serverless environment, movie review service, travel reservation, and social media site. We will show you our result of the travel reservation app where users can create an account, search for hotels and flights, sort them by price, distance, rate, find recommendations, and reserve hotel rooms and flights. The workflow consists of 10 services and includes a transaction across reserve hotel service and reserve flight service. Note that we extend this app to support flight reservation as the original implementation only supports hotels. We issue load at a constant rate for five minutes, starting at 100, 100 requests per second until the system is saturated. For travel reservation app, we achieve saturation at around 700 requests per second. The primary bottleneck is that AWS Lambda enforces a limit of 1,000 concurrent lambdas per account. We can see from the figures that build is median and 99th percental response time are each around two times higher than the baseline. And the highest loads that we could test on AWS Lambda, BLD still achieve the same throughput as the baseline at 3.3 times higher median response time. Note that the baseline doesn't support transactions nor fault tolerance. In conclusion, we implemented a framework to write transactional and fault tolerant applications on service. We designed a log-free data structure called LinkDAO to support fast logging and exactly one semantics. We introduced a collaborative distributed transaction protocol across multiple lambdas. And we, and we designed an efficient garbage collection algorithm that runs independently without affecting running lambdas or requiring any polls. Our code is available on GitHub. Thank you.